More billionaires are piling into the Bitcoin space. Whales bought the huge dip last week. Kathy Wood says that the reason we saw a dip was because of those environmental concerns, but they're being resolved. And Bitcoin and Ethereum both continue to look indecisive. I'm going to take a look at both of those charts and all the news driving markets today. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button right down below. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of news surrounding Bitcoin. We know that there's been an endless, endless line of negativity and FUD as price has dropped. But we are starting to see a mix in the news now, some positive and some negative. But first, we're going to take a look at the charts, which I will tell you right now are not telling us much. It's very indecisive, very choppy and very much sideways. But here's the Bitcoin daily chart. Now, as I've mentioned before, we had this bull flag over here, which was broken out when Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla had bought 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. And we retraced that entire move right back to where we started after people accused him of causing the dip with his uh, tweet about environmental concerns. Funny how Elon Musk was effectively erased from the chart, if that's narrative that you believe. We have the huge drop here down to 30,000. Now on the daily chart, you can see major indecision. Wicks up, wicks down, 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 up, 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 wicks everywhere. That means that when price tries to push up, Sellers push it down. When price tries to push down, buyers push it up. Nobody is winning this battle, and volume has been steadily decreasing since the drop to 30,000. For now, I don't see how you trade this. I think we just got to wait and see when it makes a major decision in either direction. Now, on the daily chart, something a little less encouraging, in my opinion. We had that beautiful bullish divergence oversold with RSI here. Well, now we do have some potential or confirm, depending on how you look at it. This one is really vague, hidden bearish divergence. Right here we had some, but this was not definitive enough of an elbow down, in my opinion, to confirm that. And that's why we continued up, and we still have sort of that same thing right here. So I think we would really need to see price come down quite a bit more, make this really definitive elbow to confirm this hidden bearish divergence, but something worth watching. A hidden bearish divergence technically means continuation to the downside, but to me more, it just means that it cancels the bull div, which was what we were watching as a sign of a reversal. Hidden divergences have been somewhat weak signals with Bitcoin historically. Now drilling into the four hour chart, you can see we did have this breakout, the retest and movement up. This blue zone here seems to be the key on this chart, 39,886 up to around 41,265. One time was rejected right at the bottom. Another time it got about halfway rejected right at the EQ. That's that equilibrium, the 50% line of that range. And once again, yesterday, we tried to push above 40K and into that zone and were rejected. I've also drawn now a trading range here in red from the lows to the highs. We have this little deviation here and here, but we we're rejected at the top of the range. The good news for now is that it is finding support once again at the 50% level of that range, the equilibrium, the EQ. This is where you would look to bounce to retest the top of the range. So if we end up with this uh, four hour candle closing like this right now, it's about 10.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you would expect a test of the top of the range. This, range, this supply zone right here should theoretically be weakening one, two, three attempts at it. Eventually, if you go at it again, it should break and we should flip that. But ultimately, going back to the daily chart, everything to me is about 41,986 or roughly 42,000. That's the line we need to get back above. That was the line that was the top of the whole move from 20,000 before we consolidated for almost a month. That's where we need to be above to start really talking about a reversal. Let's dig in briefly to Ethereum. Now, I had this inverse head and shoulders drawn here. Clearly, it broke down. I was concerned that we didn't have a real spike in volume on the break. You can still draw it now kind of like this. Same idea, and we're seeing it across a ton of altcoins with this being left shoulder, head, and potentially this whole thing being the right shoulder. So you would need to break above that, which would give us a target of about 4,127, which would coincide with you know any resistance coming off these highs over here. I would expect there to be a lot of resistance still, though, in the 3,300 to 3,400 kind of area coming off because that's really where this dump accelerated, and there's probably a lot of sellers interested still there. We are seeing a bit of increased volume right now on the four hour. So hopefully we are seeing reversal. But as we know, the ETH USD chart will largely do whatever Bitcoin does. ETH BTC, I mean, when you zoom out, this still looks like an incredible uptrend, right? We have this one bad weekly candle, but we've been going up and breaking resistance this entire time. If you zoom into the daily, I think that we have this 
little local resistance here. Got to get back up above 0.074 and we want to break this line. That would signal that maybe we're ready to go back up on that pair. Right now, the bottom line is nothing looks decisive. I could see arguments for both sides or I could see no arguments at all to get excited about movement up or down on both coins. Into the news, Wales bought $3 billion of Bitcoin when its price fell, says Chain Analysis. No surprises here. Everything shows us that uh, it was largely retail leverage that caused the drop and that they were getting liquidated right down into the hands of Wales. All the spot selling was going into their hands and that they were buying like crazy. $3 billion is quite a bit. Wales bought large amounts of Bitcoin last week, according to a report from Chain Analysis. Bitcoin's price dropped as low as 30000 during this time. Pretty, pretty serious buying by whales to buy the dip. That's what strong hands do. Billionaire Carl Icahn eyes potential 1.5 billion crypto investment. The activist investor said cryptocurrency would endure, but not necessarily all the current digital. I think we know that not all cryptocurrencies are going to endure. We don't know if he's bought Bitcoin. Usually guys like Carl Icahn don't say they're going to do something until they've already done it, because why risk changing the price before you get the chance. So I would imagine he's bought some Bitcoin. But I also would not be surprised to see Carl Icahn taking the picks and shovels approach and investing in platforms and investing in services around crypto without necessarily buying Bitcoin. But this is one more massive whale billionaire interested in the crypto space, giving it legitimacy, who also didn't used to like it, just like Ray Dalio finally said he owns Bitcoin last week after saying he thought governments would ban it just months ago. Ark's Kathy Wood blames crypto crash on ESG movement. A lot of institutional buying went on pause due to concerns about mining's environmental impact. The influential fund manager said at Consensus 2021. If you're wondering what ESG is, it's environmental, social, and governance. It was precipitated by the ESG movement and this notion, which was exacerbated by Elon Musk, that there are some real environmental problems with the mining of Bitcoin. A lot of institutional buying went on pause. She told Nathaniel Whittemore in a pre-recorded interview broadcast on Thursday. So yes, it's fair to say that not the fact that Tesla decided not to allow Bitcoin payments was not a big deal, but it was more the fact that Elon Musk pointed out that there are environmental concerns. But I think those are largely overblown. And now we're seeing Elon Musk go the other way, working with Michael Saylor and the Bitcoin Mining Council, I believe it's called to make sure that they're accountable and that everything is going more green. This is being resolved. So if the reason that they didn't want to buy was because of the environment, they should have those fears allayed and should be looking to buy once again. Now on to NFTs. NFT volume has more than tripled even amid price crash as meme.com raises 5 million. The NFT sector has seen exponential growth tripling in transactions since January and pushing through the market crash this month. According to a report by Decentralized App Marketplace DAP Radar, the average number of NFT sales rose almost 300% from 21,815 per day in January to 82,373 in May so far. This number rose even higher as crypto prices started to plummet on May 12th, with sales surging to almost 94,000 NFT transactions a day. NFTs seem immune to the price action of Bitcoin and the crypto market as a whole. This space is absolutely exploding with no end in sight. That's what there is to read here. It's growing and it continued to grow even more during the crash. Nifty news at GameStop's NFT market, NBA star LaMelo Mint's career on NFTs, and more. GameStop will be working on its own NFT marketplace, while Rookie of the Year candidate LaMelo Ball is set to drop 500 dynamic NFTs. Just more evidence that NFTs do not care what happens with Bitcoin or the rest of the market. This NFT market is here to stay and is the future of art and collectibles. That's it for today. Once again, I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Please check out everything down in the description. Sign up for my newsletter. Check out my amazing sponsor, Femex. And until next week, Peace.